We have uh, three awards uh, to give uh, to some very worthy recipients. And we have an inaugural award, which is our first um, board-selected award for outstanding achievement in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health and wellbeing. So with that, uh, I might dive straight into uh, the award ceremony. So we have uh, Loacher here. Um, stayed for the long haul, Loacher. It's fantastic that you're able to be here to, to, uh, to give these awards to the, the uh, recipients. Um, I might introduce these people now. Um, so Doug Hilton from the Walter and Eliza Hall Institute. Um, CEO of the Institute um, and a sponsor for the um, Student Award. Kate Latimer, a good mate of mine, CEO of uh, the Cranlana program and, um, and Cranlana uh, last year uh, became partners in a leadership award. Sandy Eads being the first recipient of that award last year. So, Kate, thank you. And Craig Fitzgerald who's the General Manager, Overseas Operations Director, sorry, Overseas Operations Director with Aspen Medical, uh, Craig. Thank you, and, and Aspen Medical, uh, the uh, sponsors for the Emerging Researcher Award. So the, the Emerging, the first award will be the Emerging Researcher Award. And uh, the recipient of this award has an extensive list of achievements, and some of these include being a lead and chief investigator uh, on 34 grants, um, having had 48 publications, 30 peer-reviewed articles, currently supervises research students, uh, and has mentored a number of Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal non research students and staff for research excellence. Uh, this person is a Principal Research Fellow from Queensland and it's my great pleasure to uh, recognise Associate Professor Roxanne Bainbridge um, as the uh, winner of the Emerging Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander Researcher Award. Excellent. Roxanne Bainbridge. Our next award sponsored by the Walter and Eliza Hall Institute uh, is our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Student Award. The recipient of this award to date has had research focused on improving outcomes for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people with cancer. The PhD project will be the first population-based study in Australia to investigate Indigenous women's participation in cervical cancer screening and its given consequences. Some of her outstanding achievements include being published in several milestone papers regarding Indigenous Australian women and cervical screening participation and outcomes. The PH, her PhD provided evidence of many inequalities on cervical screening amongst Indigenous women for the first time. And her thesis has included five publications as lead author, 14 peer-reviewed publications, and she's been invited to present at a number of conferences, workshops and roundtables. More recently, she's been invited by the head of the section of cancer surveillance to advise the World Health Organization Cancer Arm, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, 
on cancer epidemiology for Indigenous peoples and will be visiting IARC in Lyon, France later this year. I'm very pr proud and pleased to uh, name uh, Dr Lisa Wop as the recipient of the Student Award. Lisa Watt. Now, our third award, the Lowitcher Institute Research Leadership Award, sponsored by the Cran Lana Program, uh, is going to someone who I, I have um, a great deal of respect and admiration for. Uh, this person currently. Uh, it's actually another woman, so um, I don't know where the, the lads are not representing here. Um, currently leads two large national grants, a center, National Centre for Research Excellence in Cancer and Indigenous People, and a Cancer Council New South Wales Strategic Research Partnership grant, with investigators from leading research institutions across Australia. She's also currently a chief investigator of another large epidemiological and psycho-oncology oncology cancer projects that are reviewing support services, screening programs, systems approaches to service delivery and the feasibility of specific interventions to improve the outcomes in cancer for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. She has played a leadership role in Indigenous cancer research nationally and was instrumental in bringing together key cancer researchers, clinicians, indigenous consumers to identify cancer research priorities in 2010. She advocates uh, involving indigenous stakeholders, clinicians throughout the research projects to achieve maximum impact from research and has an impressive rec record in indigenous research capacity building. So very proud to announce Associate Professor Gail Garvey. Congratulations, Gail. <laughs> this next award is our inaugural award for outstanding achievement in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health and wellbeing. This is an award that uh, the board had discussed being created for this conference. The significance of this conference and the significance of having this award as the inaugural award. This award is uh, awarded to uh, someone who the board believes, believes is of such uh, national significance for our people um, that it should be recognised um, and the recipient should be recognised not only here but internationally. So the the recipient of this award was a leading figure in, a, in the Aboriginal rights movement, played a key role in the 1982 Brisbane Commonwealth Games protests and protests at the bicentennial celebrations in Sydney in 1988. He was an early chairman of the New South Wales Aboriginal Land Council 
and named Queensland Father of the Year in 2005. He raised nine girls and was Australia's most prominent and awarded First Nations broadcaster. Among his many honours, he was the inaugural winner of the National Deadly Award for Indigenous Broadcaster of the Year, and his work around decolonisation and invasion was recognised by Amnesty International's inaugural Media Awards in 2014. He served on numerous boards, including the National Indigenous Radio Service, a community-controlled organisation he helped found. He, also, he was also the, the Asia-Pacific representative of the World Association of Community Radio Broadcasting a role that saw him travel the world advocating for First Nations media. He was deeply involved in the renowned Murray School, the Aboriginal school in Brisbane's Acacia Ridge, and served as its chairman for many years. He got his start in the music industry, touring the country as a band manager with Murray Jama. Shortly after, he helped establish Radio Redfern, in Sydney with his mother. He eventually moved back to Brisbane and helped establish the Brisbane Indigenous Media Association and the National Indigenous Radio Service. <coughs> Many of us will remember him by his morning program, Let's Talk, which was broadcast five days a week around the nation and on the Indigenous Radio Service. Yarika and Mandanara, I might get you to come up. Uh, the recipient of this inaugural award passed on the 17th of April uh, this year, Tiger Bales. of all First Nations peoples right across the country. I'd also like to acknowledge elders, elders of the First Peoples of the land and elders of more recent arrivals. Welcome to each and every one of you. Ah, oh, thanks Dad. I can feel him strong here today. Like Dad just did so perfectly, we'd also like to acknowledge the local custodians, Nani Dai Kerr, and descendants of the local caretakers of this beautiful part of the country in which we gather today. On behalf of Dad, the Bales and Watson families, we'd like to pay our respects to Auntie Lawicha, the Institute, to everyone for inviting us here as we humbly accept this award in our Dad's honour. It's been six months, but Dad, you fought right to the very end. You gave it your all just like everything in life. Dad was a humble man of great honour, he didn't really like all the attention, so even if he was alive, he probably wouldn't be standing here to accept this award because he didn't do what he did for the accolades and the praise. He just did it because he saw a need. And if he felt a need for something to be done, Dad would do it. He was devoted to his family, his community and his country, in which he led by example. He paved the way for future generations. So thank you, Dad. I can honestly say, this world is a much better place because of that example. And we can reassure you today, his legacy is well and truly alive with his nine daughters, 20 grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren and counting. 
Yes, we've got two grandkids here tonight and me and my sister, so it's a great honour and privilege to be here in Melbourne to accept this on behalf of you, Dad. Thank you for acknowledging everything he did. I'm blessed beyond words to be your daughter and even more proud to call you Dad. The health and well-being of his family and his community was something he was so passionate about and I'm glad that he instilled that in us and that's why we're here today to accept it on Dad's behalf. I'd like to leave you with a quote that I often heard Dad repeat by his mother, our beautiful grandmother Maureen Watson. She was 85 yesterday, so it's been an emotional trip, but we made it. And this is a quote that stuck with me since I first heard Gran say it and then repeated often by Dad. It's just short and sweet, it goes like this. Through your actions today, will you be an honourable ancestor to the children of tomorrow? And that's a challenge and a pledge that I take and I instill in my children. So thank you. And I guess it's perfect timing to share a few words from our grandmother. Human beings are human, no matter what colour. And human rights are the same for me as they are for you. And if a way of life is worth living for, then it's worth dying for too. And blacks are dying every day and nobody makes any fuss. But if history honours those who fight for human rights, they can do no less than honour us. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 